Hello student, today I'm going to present here third law and zeroth law of thermodynamics. So uh, what is third law? Third law of thermodynamics state that the entropy of a system at absolute zero is a well-defined constant. So it is because of a system at zero temperature exists in its ground state. So the entropy is determined only by the degeneracy of the ground state. So Here's the third law and zeroth law in this presentation. So topic to be covered in this presentation. So these are different topics just like a third law of thermodynamics, standard entropy, cyclic process and zeroth law of thermodynamics. So third law of uh, thermodynamics is the absolute zero entropy. So this topic will cover in this presentation. So here showing the statement of the third law of thermodynamics. So the further cooling, on further cooling water molecule joined together to form ice crystal. The water molecule in the crystal are highly ordered and the entropy of the system is very low. So here the showing the high, uh, high temperature uh, means uh, uh, a solid crystal Violent molecule vibrate entropy is very low. So if we cool the solid crystal still further, the vibration of the molecule held in the crystal lattice get slower and they have very little freedom of movement, uh, very little disorder and, the, and hence very small entropy. So finally at absolute zero, all molecule vibrate vibration creases and water molecules are in perfect order. Now the entropy of the system will be zero. So uh, uh, this lead us to the statement of the third law of thermodynamics at absolute zero. The entropy of a pure crystal is also zero. That is delta S is equal to zero at uh, zero Kelvin temperature is zero Kelvin. So here the showing the temperature high, low and zero. So no molecule vibration showing here the perfect order means zero uh, entropy is zero. So this is a statement of third law of thermodynamics. So numerical uh, definition of thermodynamics when heat Q flow into a, into a system the entropy increase by Q upon T. So the heat flowing out of a system proceed a corresponding decrease. So the entropy could be precise defined as for a reversible change taking place at fixed temperature and the changes in the entropy that is delta S is equal to the heat absorbed or evolved divided by the temperature that is delta S is equal to Q upon T. So, so if uh, heat is absorbed then delta S is positive and there will be increase in entropy. So if heat is evolved delta S is negative so there is a decrease in entropy. So absorption of heat is showing the delta S is positive means there will be increase in entropy if heat is evolved that is delta s is negative so there is a decrease in entropy so the unit of entropy is calories per degree per mole that is calorie per mole per kelvin if uh, in the si system the unit of joule per mole per degree is equal to joule per mole per kelvin one is one is equal to 4.184 so there is uh, showing the uh, heat flow into a system and the entropy increase by QT. So heat flow out, flowing out of a system produce a corresponding decreases. So the entropy could precisely define that the reversible change take place in a fixed temperature. The change in entropy is the equal to the heat absorbed or evolved divided by the temperature. So delta S is positive when there will be increase in entropy and delta S is negative. So there is a decrease in entropy. 
now move to the next slide so standard entropy so absolute entropy at a substance at 25 degree centigrade that is 298 kelvin and one atmospheric pressure is called a standard entropy showing s not so the absolute entropy of element is zero only at zero kelvin in a perfect crystal and the standard entropies of all substances at any temperature above zero kelvin is always have positive value so showing here delta s uh, means changes in entropy uh, not means standard and delta s product minus uh, delta s reactant so the standard entropy of formation is that so it is a it is the entropy of formation of one mole of a compound from the elements under standard condition if it's denoted as a delta f 0f so uh, we can calculate the value of entropy of a given compound from the value of delta s not of the element so delta s not final is equal to delta s not compound and delta s element so the showing the standard entropy of the substances here showing a numerical on ba uh, on based on standard entropy so is solve example is that so urea hydrolyzes in the presence of water to produce ammonia and carbon dioxide so this equation is here so uh, this is urea in a uh, water molecule liquid and converted into carbon dioxide and ammonia so what is the standard entropy change for this reaction when one mole of urea react with water the standard entropies of the reactant and the product are listed below means these values of the substances standard entropies are given here so putting this value in this equation we solve this problem and getting the 84.81 uh, calorie per uh, kelvin so this numerical is based on standard entropy here showing the numerical solve problem so calculate the standard entropy of formation that is delta s not f of co2 gas given standard entropies of co2 gas and carbon so solid and oxygen gas which are 2.213.6 and 5.740 and 205.0 joule per kelvin respectively so these value will put in this equation we got this uh, solve this value to find the 2.86 joule per kelvin so this is the standard entropy of formation of this reaction so uh, <coughs> here yes, showing the cyclic process when a system undergo a series of changes and in the end return to its original state is said to have completed as cycle so the whole process is comprising the various changes the uh, changes in terms a cyclic process so overall cyclic process is the whole process which comprises the various changes in term of this term as cyclic process so since the internal energy of a system depend upon its state so it stand to reason that in cyclic process the net changes of energy is zero or we can say that the work done by the system during all these changes should be equal to the heat absorbed by the system showing here delta E is equal to zero is equal to Q minus W or Q equal to W. So uh, work done is equal to heat. So in cyclic process, showing the uh, series of changes in and in its return to the end at its original state is said to be a cycle means a complete cycle. So this showing here the cyclic process. Here showing the heat engine. So the flow of heat uh, from a hotter body to a colder body is a spontaneous process. The heat that flow out spontaneously 
can be used to be done uh, to be do work with the help of suitable device so showing here the heat source and T2 and heat sink T1 so his engine heat engine and the heat Q2 and Q1 so work done is up to Q minus Q1 uh, so the a machine which can do work by using heat uh, that flow out spontaneously from high temperature sources and to a lower temperature sink is called a heat engine. So efficiency of a heat engine is that the ratio of work obtained in a cyclic process that is W to be uh, to the heat taken from higher temperature reservoir Q is referred to as the efficiency of a heat engine. So overall process is that work is Q2, Q2 minus Q one is a heat engine. Here showing the Carnot cycle. So Carnot cycle is an imaginary uh, engine could perform a series of operations between temperature T1 to T2 and so that at the end of this operation the system was restored to the original state. So the, this cycle of processes which occur under reversible condition is referred as at as the Carnot cycle. So the medium employed in the operation Carnot engine was one mole of an ideal gas which could be imagined to be contained in a cylinder fitted with a piston uh, frictionless piston. So here the showing uh, position A, B, C and D. So there are the different types of process. The Carnot cycle comprises the four types of processes. Means operations are there. So first one is isothermal, and second one is adiabatic, and third one is isothermal again, and the fourth one is adiabatic process. So uh, there is a difference between isothermal and adiabatic. So isothermal is a reversible, and isothermal reversible expansion and isothermal reversible compression and adiabatic reversible expansion and adiabatic reversible compression. So above four processes are shown in the is the indicate diagram of Carnot cycle. So here showing the first operation that, that is the first process the isothermal reversible expansion. So isothermal reversible expansion let us uh, T2, P1 and V1 uh, to be the temperature, pressure and volume. T2, uh, P1 here showing T2 and P1 and V1 is the temperature, pressure and volume respectively of the gas enclosed in a cylinder initially. So the cylinder is placed in the heat reservoir at a high temperature T2. Now the gas is allowed to expand isothermally and the reversibly so that the volume increases from V1 to V2. So V1 to V2 is from A to B represent the path of the process in the diagram. So uh, work done since the process in operation 1 is isothermal. So delta is equal to 0 if Q2 is to, uh, to be the heat absorbed by the system and W1 is the work done by it according to the first law delta E is equal to Q minus W so Q2 is equal to Q1 or Q1 is R, uh, R minus R2 log and V2 upon V1 therefore Q2 is equal to R2 log in V2 upon V1 or W minus W1 R2 V1 and uh, log V2 upon V1 so here they're showing the First operation means isothermal reversible expansion in Carnot cycle. This is second operation adiabatic reversible expansion and third operation isothermal reversible compression. So in uh, second operation that is adiabatic reversible expansion. So a gas at B. So showing here the a gas at B uh, at the temperature T2. Uh, T2 and volume V2 under a new pressure V2 the gas is not allowed to expand reversibly from volume V2 V3 uh, 
uh, uh, when temperature drop from T2 to T3 along with uh, BC uh, since uh, work done uh, step uh, since this step is adiabatic so Q is equal to zero if W2 uh, to be the work done according to the first law equation is delta I is equal to Q minus W so overall equation is now changed according to that so now there's another is a third operation means uh, isothermal reversible compression. So uh, now the cylinder is placed in uh, contact uh, with a heat reservoir at lower temperature. So at lower temperature T1, so the volume of the gas is then compressed isothermally and reversibly from V2 to V4. So uh, sorry, V3 to V4. Uh, represented in CD diagram here showing here CD diagram so the work done during the compression the gas produce heat which is transfer uh, to the low temperature reservoir since the process take place isothermally uh, de that is delta E is equal to zero if Q1 is the heat given to the reservoir and W3 is the work done on the gas by using proper sign of Q and W, we have uh, this equation, following this equation. So now move to the next slide, is that is uh, showing the fourth operation, that is adiabatic reversible compression. So the gas with volume V4, <coughs> V4 and temperature T1, and temperature T1 at D, so uh, at D, uh, is compressed adiabatically along with dA until it regains the original states that is the volume of the system become uh, V1 and its temperature T2. So work done in this uh, operation is in this step done is uh, work done is on the system and therefore being the negative sign so it is de uh, denoted by W4 uh, we written here the equation W4 CV V2 T2 minus T1. So now work done in a one cycle in the one Carnot cycle by adding up this work done W in all the four operation of the cycle as shown equation one two three and four as shown in previous slide. So we have this equation. So we putting this value and got this equation. So this is a operation in adiabatic uh, uh, sorry uh, Carnot cycle. Here they are showing you another law of thermodynamics that is zeroth law of thermodynamics. So uh, the term zeroth law of thermodynamics is generally statement that about the bodies in contact at thermal equilibrium and it is the basic of the concept of temperature. So the most common definition of the zeroth law of thermodynamics is that if two thermodynamic system are in thermal equilibrium with a third, they are also in thermal equilibrium with each other. So the term zeroth law uh, was coined by uh, H. Flower. In many ways, the law is more fundamental than any of the others. However, the need to state is practically explicitly as a law uh, as a law was not perceived until the first law of the 20th century uh, a law uh, long after the first three law were already wide in use and the name as such has zero numbering therefore uh, there is a still some discussion about its status, status in the relation to the other three laws so that's why it's uh, term as Zeroth law of thermodynamics. So zeroth law of thermodynamics, a, a system is a thermal uh, thermal equilibrium in a system whose macroscopic properties, just like a pressure, temperature, volume, etc., are not changing in time. A hot cup of coffee is sitting on a kitchen table is not in at equilibrium and its surrounding because it's cooling off and decrease its temperature. Once its temperature stop decreasing, it will be at room temperature and it will be in 
thermal uh, equilibrium with its surrounding. So here the showing object two and three. So object two and three and uh, equilibrium is each other with object one. So is the thermometer. And when two objects are separately in thermodynamics equilibrium, the third object uh, are uh, they are in equilibrium with each other. So the object in thermodynamic equilibrium have the same temperature. So this is the zeroth law of thermodynamics. So overall summary means conclusion of this presentation is the showing here the third law of thermodynamics and standard entropy cyclic process that will discuss the Carnot cycle and zeroth law of thermodynamics. So in third law of thermodynamics is this is occur in at absolute zero means the randomness is at zero degree uh, degree centigrade the randomness will zero means orderness will achieve so there is a different type to this topic will dis uh, discuss in this presentation so now move to the uh, next slide source sources and references are used for the preparation of this presentation so the material presented in this lecture has been taken from various books and internet websites so this instructional material is for instructional purpose only so uh, these references will use uh, is used for the preparation of this uh, presentation uh, thank you thank you for watching for this presentation